Alright, well, I have a plan and it's finally time to commit. So I'm unboxing all these uh, 4 terabyte MVV drives. And they're going to go in their home where they belong. And I discussed with another person my concerns on the NVMe drives in this card. And basically what I was told was there should be enough airflow to keep them cool without the heat sink and the thermal pads. Because I don't like how the thermal pads are uh, bending my drives. Let's set this aside here. So the plan is I'm just going to run the drives in there without the thermal pads. Oops. Let me use this as my work surface because I don't want to move the camera. So I'm kind of curious what the damage is going to look like. I need a better screwdriver for that though. Haha. since I uh, checked out this card even. So, now I should be able to remove the heat sink. The uh, thermal pads might be holding on fairly strongly though. Oh, yeah, they're bending me the other way now. I'm not a fan of these thermal pads. I think I got everything, because these two screws are for the fan. Those are for the NVMe. But, uh, yeah, so the thermal pads don't want to let go. Oh boy. Just gonna bend everything. Am I doing something wrong? No, it's just thermal pads are stubborn. I'll do this off the tripod my way. So much suction. Alright, starting to peel away. A little closer to my body so I can get a better grip. Yeah. So I'm not super keen on these thermal pads, that's for sure. And since I'm never good to set them, I'm just going to attach them to the side of my server rack. Oh boy. Also, I probably should wipe the heat sink down. Thermal pads always tend to leave a nasty residue. I don't really understand how these things work. I I think there's some sort of like I don't know. I probably shouldn't expect that. I'll sound too stupid. It's almost like they're a, like a putty with with an oil or something in that's thermally conductive. But yeah, I wasn't too kind to my labels on these. But I mean, they've straightened out. So the plan's going to be just to take this and just slap it on over. And I think it'll be fine. I don't know. Worst case scenario, if they run too hot, I'll just get rid of the heat sink and the fan. Um, it might be too restrictive. But I think when I was testing this in a VM, I wasn't doing any rights to it. But um, I think they're around, sitting around 35 Celsius. Yeah, it's straightened out. So I think I'm going to wipe... Oops, i just sit down top of the screws. Don't want to do that. I think I'm going to wipe the heat sink off real quick with uh, a little rubbing alcohol. Alright. Let's give this a quick little wipe down. Clean it off. Looks like I'm taking some of the ink with it. Oh well. I don't really plan on using this in a PC ever. I'll never need it in a PC. Um, because, I mean, that's what the NAS is for. And I don't know why I would need four NVMe drives in a single PC. Honestly, I kind of regret buying these Crucial drives. They're going to be fine. There's nothing wrong with them. I, uh... I just kind of wish I would have gone with U.2 drives instead for their better durability. Um, 
at the time when I started working on this setup. I don't know if I have the R730 yet, let alone an R730 XD. So I think what the plan was is, yeah, use this in my R720. Um, but then I got the R730 XD and then I learned that it has uh, U.2 support for NVMe drives in the last four bays and it's like, well, that's kind of neat, but it's kind of too late now. But yeah, there's four terabyte. Gosh, these are just, it's just crazy. Like you couldn't do the density the same as a two and a half inch drive, but I could fit so many of these in the same amount of space that two and a half inch drive would use. It just, yeah. This is just, just wild. So this is a thousand dollars worth of drives, current price. I bought these last year on Black Friday, and I think, I think what I paid for these. I think uh, it was like 165 or 185 each. I got lucky and bought them right before flash prices went back up. I wish flash prices would go back down. So I can uh, pick up some more 2.5 inch, uh, 2 terabyte SSDs, but I want them to go back down to their $55 price, not, not pay $100 for them. Granted, those ones for $55 were Samsung P something or other series, so still fairly good endurance and stuff, but I do prefer the Intels if I can get my hands on them, but I don't want to do what I did with the uh, 8 Intel 2 terabyte drives that are in here right now, and I don't want to have to pay $120 a piece for them. I think that's what it was. It's like $1,200 for 8 of them after tax. That was pricey. Better fingers. Um... Yeah, that was, that was pricey. I mean, I do use them. And in theory, those drives will outlive me. So, there's that. But, uh, yeah. I'm just gonna double check alignment here. and tight where it belongs. I thought about replacing this card with one that was just uh, bifurcation and no fans or heat sinks, but I looked up the price and it's like, alright, well, it's literally the same price, so... There's no reason to buy a different card if I already own this. But, uh, yeah. There's, uh, 16 terabytes. <laughs> Jeez. I think that's actually more storage than what's in this server right now. Granted, what's in this server right now is very redundant, too. I've got RAID 50 going on uh, both of my SSD clusters. I will be losing one of these drives to redundancy purposes, so... Only gonna have 12 terabytes. It's gonna be very sad. Currently, I'm sitting at 5 terabytes of storage for my NAS that I'm using. So, hopefully, this will give me enough headroom. I have decided that I'm gonna start pushing, saving some of my 4K footage and pushing that over to the uh, Slager NAS. I don't know if I'm gonna back it up. I don't really know if I care too much about my 4K footage. It's just I can't get those files off YouTube if I need them. And I don't want to have to OBS screen record it because it's just a huge pain in the butt. Um, and occasionally I need that footage. So it's like, well, that sucks. Right. So I don't know yet. I have been saving much of the uh, 
4K like dash cam footage though, just because it takes up a lot of space. I think some of those uh, videos after I edit them end up being like, I don't know what it is, I think it's like 50 gigabytes an hour. Part of it's my fault because I'm not tweaking the settings on Resolve. Um, I think I can lower the bitrate to a few other things. But if I don't, if I don't do it at a really high bitrate, for some reason Resolve just makes my GoPro footage look terrible. You get like artifacts and stuff and then it just doesn't work, so I don't know. I like Resolve, but Resolve just does not play nice with the GoPro footage. That powers off. Alright, and just to show, basically there's nothing. Uh, maybe? There's nothing above those drives. I think it'll be an adequate air, air gap. Just looking down the top. There's probably the eighth of an inch above the chips and below the heatsink. So, we'll see. I think the biggest thing I'm going to do is when I uh, do the file transfer from my main NAS to my new main NAS, <laughs> um, I'm going to see what kind of temperatures I end up running into. But, I don't know. That'll be a different video. And like always, we'll do the uh, World Explode test. Seems like it's fine. This is set up to auto power on. I might change that setting in the BIOS. Bifurcation is already on since that card is already there, so shouldn't have to do anything else. I think it will do a power recharacterization thingy, so yeah. But since it's on rails, that was an easy upgrade. Um, I might add more memory to this once I get more VMs going, but uh, that's a pretty low priority at the moment. All right, and pull this up. Oh, I don't think this. Yeah, it's not clear. Okay. Yeah, that's the wrong server. It makes me so happy to uh, have that KVM switch there since the uh, KVM I'm using doesn't have hotkeys apparently, which is really weird. But yeah, we're just uh, booting up here now. Boy, that is crooked. I think this whole video is going to be crooked. <laughs> oh man. Um. Yeah, that's as good as it's going to get. But, uh, yeah, so that upgrade's finally done. I will be making a, um, uh, home lab tour video, an updated one here sometime in the near future. I'm just kind of trying to finish dialing things in before the up, or after this upgrade, before I make the video. Um, I need to get my IP addresses under wraps. I'm starting to get sick of wondering what all the IP addresses on my network are and not being able to figure them out. And then, uh, the other thing I need to do is I need to get my data under control. Uh, because I need to migrate everything over to TrueNAS scale from core and, uh, figure out, get backups under control and figure out a few other things. I don't really know, Ooh, I don't think I'm going to get that low. Let's see here. There we go. Uh, I don't really know what the fate of the cold storage box is going to be. It won't have enough storage capacity to back up my primary NAS anymore. And I don't really have the drive base for it. Uh, because that motherboard only has six SATA ports. And I don't really want to buy drives. I could. I don't know if I want to though. Um, that system has 8 terabytes of storage capacity right now. And I need... Um, well, I need 12. Because my primary, my primary NAS needs to be backed up as much as I can. I will have my remote backups and I will have the primary backup, which would be the Slager, so... And then, technically, this R720 has no purpose now. 
I think I think I might use it for testing and screwing around, but we'll see. Um, so that's kind of that for this video. The uh, you go high enough? I think I better try that back up. Um, but yeah, the server's booting. It's making interesting fan choices. Uh, hopefully it's going to settle down. I don't know. But, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully that was interesting and thanks for watching.